Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're calling in from today. My name is Amy Shane Rock and I'm with the Growth Zone Marketing Department. Welcome to today's webinar, Chaos to Calm with Holly Duckworth. We'll get started if you're all ready and you've been sharing where you're calling in from in the chat window. We're happy to have you here. Uh, my name is Amy, like I said. I'm happy to welcome Holly today. She's been called the trailblazer of mindfulness for business. She is the owner of Leadership Solutions International, and for over 20 years, she has worked to change how we think about the impacts of stress in meetings. As a certified workplace mindfulness facilitator, she leads mindfulness efforts around the world. This is an interactive presentation, and Holly welcomes you to use the chat window to participate throughout. I'm excited to have Holly here to help me with the stresses in my life, and I hope you are too. Welcome, Holly. Welcome. Well, thank you so much to you, Amy and Nancy and the entire team at Growth Zone. It is such a delight to have such a wonderful audience today. I see we've got Portland, Oregon in the house, some New York, um, Baynard Lakes. I've been there. I think we even have a little Hawaii showing up and some Anchorage. And so it is a great joy for all of us to be able to reconnect in this way. And of course, we're all uh, continuing to grow and evolve our ability to connect via technology. We've got some Florida in the house. Um, as Amy said, want to invite you to utilize that chat box and I will uh, periodically try to try to reference it, but we'll do, we'll do our best to get to your questions at the end of this webinar. And of course, you can always feel free to contact me at any point. May this be just the beginning of a conversation on how you can reduce your stress and create a little more success for yourself as well as your organization. And again, we just want to thank our, our partners here at Grow Zone for bringing us uh, together and all of these educational opportunities. Um, just know that as, we, as we're moving through the webinar today, we are recording the session and we'll make it available to you. And you will also receive CAE credit for your participation in this workshop. So everyday mindfulness. I just want to invite you to give yourself this hour to get the most out of this session. I would invite you to maybe just flip your cell phone over, close those extra windows that aren't, aren't Zoom and give yourself this opportunity to learn a little bit more about mindfulness and maybe a tip or strategy or two to help you lead more effectively in this transformative world. You know, we used to greet each other and we'd say, you know, how are you, how are you? And we'd say, well, I'm okay, I'm okay. But I'm okay was really code for I'm about to lose my stuff and I don't want you to know. Uh, that's the opening line of, of my book, Everyday Mindfulness from Chaos to Calm in a Crazy World. I wrote that in 2018, having no idea what would be coming our way. As we get underway, you'll, you'll see on your screen there a picture. You know, we used to say, is your glass half full or is your glass half empty? But knowing that I am looking at a room of busy association and chamber executives and organizational leaders, I know your glass is no longer half full or half empty. It's overflowing, spilling over the top onto the table and probably still have a lot yet to do. So this is your opportunity to take a moment to breathe, to center and to focus. Because what I know now more than ever is if you don't take care of you, you cannot continue to take care of your chamber members and your association members, your boards of directors, yourself and your personal family and friends. We know life has been a powerful roller coaster. Some of you have been sitting in the front going, yes, on to the next thing. Others of you maybe have been in the back seat watching the ride unfold. And some of you are in the middle trying to decide how you're gonna navigate the new. This hour, I wanna give you an opportunity to mindfully think about the roller coaster going forward. Which seat are you gonna select? Because which seat you select is powerful and how you will transform the futures of the organizations that you lead. 
So today we have a power packed session for you. I'm gonna share with you some of the findings of the State of the Global Workplace Report. I'm gonna tell you what mindfulness is, share a little bit about your brain and your mind health to create a little more sense of wellness for yourself. I invite you to experience some stress reduction and focus strategies that you can do at home, you can do at work. And I'll tell you, having led board retreats and strategic planning sessions and keynoted organizations around the world, these sessions can often be a secret weapon in your tool belt as an association leader to get your busy volunteers focused on the work that you need them to do to be successful. So as we begin today, I do want to revisit that chat box. Take a moment to check in with yourself. How are you feeling as we begin today? And I just want you to type in that chat box, what's a one word, maybe a tweet, quick little word of how are you feeling as we begin today? I'm gonna take a moment and take a peek at that chat box and see what it's, what it's sharing with us. Tired, cognitive overload, motivated, centered, exhausted, busy in all capital letters. Gail, love that. Great, life is good and getting better, love that. Stressed, tired, burnt out, overwhelmed, scatterbrained. That's, there, there was a great article on, on the Today Show yesterday about how our brains really are a little, a little, little challenged right now. Lydia, optimistic, well, shake that off in, into the rest of us. Weighed down, but hopeful. Love that, Alicia. Grateful. All of these from Kimberly. You know, wherever you are, I think it's important. And it's kind of an exciting opportunity to really look at that list of words and recognize there's no right or wrong. It just simply is what it is right now. And that you're not alone in this. I think especially sometimes in this Zoom world, and some of us are emerging in different ways, we forget that there's other people feeling just like us. And even as I read those words, you know, there's some hopeful and excited people, there's some stressed and burnout people, but sometimes it's just nice to remember that you are not alone. So as we begin today, I always like to bring research into this, this topic. And um, this study is one that you can certainly get. I'm going to just kind of recap it a little for you. State of the Global Workforce Report. I'm, I'm not so sure that we all needed a big report to tell us we're stressed out, but I like this one in particular because it is global in nature. And whether you're in Hawaii or Nashville or Wyoming, all of the work that we do, we know, especially now in this post-pandemic world, we're all impacting everybody. United States, Canada, Mexico, Australia, we are truly interconnected. And in this study, they asked, did you experience a lot of stress a lot during the day? How about stress? In 2021, 43% of the global workforce was saying, yes, they experienced stress. Of course, the highest of work was in those United States and Canada. And you can see the breakdown, of course, by age and by gender. But this report goes on to say, that roughly seven in 10 employees are struggling or suffering rather than thriving in their overall lives. And you know, at the intersection of the organizations you do, you have paid staff and non-paid staff. All of them we might lump into this idea of employees. 80% are not engaged or actively disengaged at work. This costs the local GDP over $8.1 trillion lost in productivity every year. And I know with the clients I've been consulting, nonprofits and associations, chambers, you've been especially impacted by this work because in many cases, your volunteers are no longer able to volunteer and maybe they're just now slowly coming back. What we've learned through this report is, and these transformative times is our mental health is critical. If we're not in alignment with our own mental, physical, emotional health, we know that it can have a key driver in our economic energy. It will actually decline our economic dynamism. We're seeing that now with our economy being challenged. But I'm here to tell you these trends can slowly be reversed with human skills. 
creating inspiring workplaces, inspiring cultures that maximize the potential well being of every employee and every volunteer. So I ask you, now that we have our words in our chat box, is your mind full or is your mind full? And this graphic can often resonate with folks, but embedded in it is one of the first myths of mindfulness. Mindfulness isn't necessarily about emptying your brain. It's about taking opportunities to focus in the moment. So it may feel like emptying your brain, but so often it's just about becoming more present in the moment. So what is mindfulness? Is it about sitting at your computer in a yoga position? Well, most likely not. There's a many myths about mindfulness out there. First and foremost, that mindfulness takes a lot of time. And in today's session, I'm gonna share with you a few tips and tricks that allow you to be mindful in just one or two minutes a day. Another key myth or barrier to becoming a mindful leader is the idea, is this spiritual or religious? And I wanna tell you right off the bat that mindfulness is kinda of like the word Amazon. Remember when Amazon was a place you went to in the jungle? Well, as the definition of Amazon has changed to being that jungle online, we go to to purchase items. The word mindfulness has also changed. It's no longer just about any sort of spiritual tradition or going to sit on a mountaintop. Mindfulness can sit right next to your religious or spiritual tradition if you have one, or it can be a secular and neuroscience-based practice to work out your mind, which science is proving now more than ever. Believe it or not, your heart actually responds to a situation, a threat or a celebration before your brain. So mindfulness is an emerging trend and I've been studying this for, for more than 10 years. Some of you may even know me from my first book, Control, Alt, Believe, Reboot Your Association for Success. And I've just continued to add to my association, my volunteer work, this tool of mindfulness. But it started with this magazine, Mindfulness, the new science of health and happiness. Perhaps you've seen a mindfulness magazine in your local grocery store as well. When I first started, there was only less than a hundred mindfulness research-based programs happening each and every year. Now there's hundreds of mindfulness research programs coming out each and every month. In fact, I'm proud to be a member of the American Mindfulness Research Association. And you can see on your screen, a lot of modern media now is referencing mindfulness. ABC News, rewiring your brain for happiness. Meditation can physically change your brain. Even beginners can curb pain with meditation. Perhaps you've seen the famous 60 minute clip where Anderson Cooper goes and has a mindfulness experience and reduces his stress as well. Or maybe Dan Harris. Dan Harris was an ABC News reporter who famously, unfortunately, had a mental breakdown live on national TV. He has since learned the practice of mindfulness, the practice of meditation, went back to ABC utilizing these techniques to find greater success at work and ultimately chose to write a book called 10% Happier, which is now a famous podcast an entire movement. So what are you gonna to do today to make your day maybe just 1% happier? Mindfulness might be a key to that. Mindfulness is more than just stacking rocks or sitting on an ocean. Mindfulness is becoming a powerful movement. And I would invite you if you're interested in a deeper dive in this conversation to check out the Mindfulness Movement movie. I've partnered with the executive producer on this movie to share it with my association colleagues and do mindful movie nights and have the opportunity to see people like Deepak or Jewel, our friend Bill George at Harvard University talk about how we might've gotten this word wrong, mindfulness. Even Deepak says, we should have called it awarefulness. 
So if you wish your people were more aware and present to you, a mindfulness strategy can be a key indicator that you have the opportunity to bring your people more focus and more presence. American Society of Mindfulness, are they hiring? I'm guessing it's a good work environment. Well, you know, it just might be. Mindfulness. Some of what makes it a little curious for people is there's not necessarily one agreed upon definition of mindfulness, but one is emerging. And it's based on the work of this man, John Kabat-Zinn. John Kabat-Zinn in 1979 brought modern mindfulness to North America. He founded the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Institute at the University of Massachusetts Medical Center. And he started with people who were having physical challenges and invited them to do short mindful practices. And each and every one of them has since reported reduced pain, reduced stress and greater productivity as a result of this work. And that university still stands as one of the top mindfulness centers in the country, but they've continued to expand across the world. So mindfulness is the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally. It's a lot of words. So I like to simplify it to say mindfulness is the practice of being present in the moment. And I break it down a little further. Mindfulness is a practice, meaning mindfulness is not necessarily a perfect. You don't just brush your teeth once and be done with it for the rest of your life. Mindfulness is the same thing. So perhaps you're sitting there at your desk saying, well, you know, I've tried mindfulness. It didn't work for me. Maybe try it just one more time. It's a practice, not a perfect. And of course, it's the idea of being fully present in the moment. We've all suffered that loss of productivity because somebody on the call wasn't paying full attention. Maybe someone in your meeting was responding to emails instead of being fully present. Inviting them to a mindfulness practice can increase your productivity and help you a lot along the way. So I just wanna invite you to remember, ah, you are here. Maybe take a moment to mindfully bring yourself back to your screen. If you're back in your traditional office, maybe close the door and come back to this present moment. To truly be a mindful association or chamber leader, we have to live these practices and invite people into them. And maybe even in a post-pandemic world, we stop rewarding busy and start rewarding mindfulness. So that when we do come together face-to-face, -to -face, whether that's this afternoon, tomorrow, or a month from now, we've started to build that resilience muscle again. Because as some of you even, even noted, our brains are a little tired coming back. We, we dialed down our, our sensory perception in, in the, the time of, of lockdown and pandemic. And now as we reemerge, our brains are literally rewiring themselves. So there's many ways to practice mindfulness, but I like to focus on four. One is certainly a formal practice. One's an informal practice, micro practice or workplace integrated. All of the work that I'm sharing with you today on mindfulness is both secular and neuroscience based. So if you're looking for a formal practice, that's gonna be taking some time away, maybe doing a meditation retreat. But an informal practice could be something as simple as being fully present, walking to the mailbox, taking a moment. When's the last time you actually felt your feet, heel, toe, heel, toe, touching the ground? Or there's a micro practice. One of my favorites, write this one down. Everybody loves this one, is the stop practice. S-T-O-P, stop. Take a breath, observe, and proceed. Before you pick up that phone call to that member who's maybe a little grouchy about something they don't necessarily like about your organization, S-T-O-P, stop. Take a breath, observe, and proceed. That's a great example of both a micro practice and a practice that you can 
workplace integrate into your day. It's also one that I like to, to use with members or clients. You know, let them, let them unload, download what's going on with them. And just, hey, you know, let's take a moment, let's breathe before we, we, we move forward. So as we do that, I want you to take a moment and we're gonna do a certified workplace mindfulness practice. Because I can talk about mindfulness all day, but I think there's a power in actually doing one. So I want you to take a moment and think about your intention. And I showed this little technique to Amy when we were setting up, and I think it might be a cool tool you can use as well. If you are an Amazon Prime member, there's Amazon Prime Music. And we're gonna listen to a little bit of Spa Day as I guide us through a meditation that's often our favorite. And this is a compassionate connection meditation. And we're just gonna do this for about four minutes. And I trust Amy that you can hear the music. So I just I wanna- Don't think we can hear you. <laughs> No, cannot hear. Okay. But you could hear so me, so that's great. <laughs> so let's just take a moment. And right where you are, I want to invite you to just breathe and pause and check in with yourself. We're going to do about a four minute compassion, the mindfulness practice. This is a guided practice. But my guidance is merely an invitation. Take a moment to choose a posture that works for you. Maybe this is your moment you stand at your desk. Maybe you uncross your legs. Allow yourself a moment of comfort. Choose if you'd like to open your eyes or close them, knowing that you can never do mindfulness wrong. As we begin, let's pause and take a moment to bring to your awareness someone who cares about you. Remember a person who makes you smile. Maybe makes you feel safe and loved. Someone with whom you are at ease. And if it's challenging to think of someone, just imagine what it would feel like to be cared for and loved. Remember you are deserving of presence, of kindness, of love. And as you keep this person in your mind's awareness, I just invite you to take a moment, maybe put your hand over your heart and say with me or whisper in your mind's awareness, may you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. May you be kind to yourself. As association and chamber leaders, I know it's easy for you to give that sense of energy to another. Now take a breath in and Maybe bring your awareness to your feet touching the ground. Breathe in and out. Feel the earth gently pressing up against your feet. Remind yourself that you too are deserving of love and kindness. So gently release your focus on that other person and bring your focus back to you. And I invite you to whisper with me or hear these words wash over you. May I 
be safe. Take a moment and feel a sense of safety throughout your body. And inhale, may I be healthy and strong. Inhale, a sense of health. Exhale, a sense of strength. May I live with ease. Breathe in a sense of ease and breathe out a sense of ease. May I be kind to myself right here and right now. Breathe in an awareness that you must be kind to yourself to be kind in service to your organization. And now shift your awareness back to your breath. Take a moment to feel a sense of calm, of stillness. And as we come to a close of this brief connection and compassion experience, take a moment of gratitude. So many of you shared that as a feeling Take a moment to appreciate yourself, the gift you are, first to yourself, and then to your organization, and next to the world. Taking a moment to nurture yourself in this way. And gently, when you are ready, I invite you to wiggle your fingers and toes. Gently come back to the screen, to the candle, remembering the light that you are in this world and remembering even just a short mindful moment, a breath is a moment of self care. You can do periodically throughout the day to make yourself mindful and aware. So now that we've moved through that brief mini practice, I invite you again to visit the chat box and give us a word or a tweet. How are you feeling after that mindful mini practice? We're feeling lovely, calmer, calmer and safer, a little chill, rested. See, sometimes that misnomer mindfulness takes a lot of time. Isn't necessarily the truth. You can just take a moment and even that little tip, that Amazon Music Prime, spa channel for a minute to bring yourself more grounded, more relaxed, ready to, do I take this on the road? You bet, Susan, anytime, where are we going? Uh, th th these experiences give us the opportunity to connect. Oh, I love it, Susan's in Las Vegas. People tell me all the time, Holly, you cannot be mindful in Las Vegas. And believe it or not, I have done a ton of these types of programs in Las Vegas because when the energy is even more rolled up, whether you're in New York, Wisconsin, Wyoming, Illinois, or Austin, then wherever you are, if you just take a moment to settle down, take a breath, it allows you to make better decisions together. So now that you've had that opportunity to connect, I wanna invite you to think about what are you doing for your brain health? We so often think about what are we eating? What are we drinking? Are we getting enough water? But our brain is a powerful engine. And I, I like to think about mindfulness as a workout for your brain to create more brain health. 
And for busy executives, I can go into the neuroscience all day long, but I think it's important that you just think about it in terms of examples. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about my friend, Julia. Julia is a business owner in a marketing or web design firm. She might be a member of your local chamber of commerce. She has a challenge, phone ringing, coming into the office, can't balance priorities. So I taught her that stop practice, stop, take a minute, observe and proceed. Scientifically, what that does in her brain is helps her to sharpen and sustain focus. It actually taps into to her amygdala. So if you want to get your brain muscle working in a little bit of a focused way, that stop practice works for Julia and it might work for you too. So mindfulness provides relevant value. Some of you have shared it already. It improves your concentration. It creates better interpersonal skills, greater empathy, and when done effectively, enhances your creativity. When you can release all of that sense of overwhelm, you can bring in a little more creativity. And I love the case study of Intel. Perhaps you've heard of the company Intel. They have a mindfulness workplace program where they invited some of their engineers to do a mindfulness practice like this every day for I believe it was eight weeks. They took about 30 minutes out, did their mindfulness practice, but then they couldn't block that next 30 minutes. And as a team, they just came together and they started ruminating on a project they had been working on. And because they had cleared their brains and their hearts over the about, about the fourth week of just taking that extra half an hour to be in that creative, calmer energy, they were able to solve a multi-million dollar problem with mindfulness because it enhanced their creativity. And I know from the strategic planning and retreats I've hosted, the same thing can work for your organization as you look at your organization with new eyes. So back to the brain health. This is my friend, Peter. He's a multitasking executive as well. I taught him that awareness of breath. And you got little hints of that in today's practice. When is that last time you gifted yourself with the, the feeling of the air going in your nose and out your mouth? In your nose and out your mouth. Taking an awareness of breath meditation. And I have a complimentary one on my website so that you can, can access calms your amygdala and it helps your brain to not get hijacked by those strong emotions and might help you recover from stress. No doubt we've all seen that video of, of Chris Rock and Will Smith. I bet they're wishing they had taken a moment to just simply be aware of their breath to recover from a stressful moment. Pre provides a calmer disposition. I saw that word come up across the screen quite a lot that helps with more positive thought processes, allows you to feel refreshed and experience focus. I can tell you these things, but I'm grateful that you experience them by actually trying mindfulness, even here on this Zoom session. Helps us transform the stress of high management positions, helps us to connect to one another, increases our confidence, adds to our developmental strategies, like my friend Brian here, Brian is a busy sales professional. I know many of you are serving sales professionals. A lot of realtors and realtor associations are on this call as well. The challenge might be, how are you connecting to your current clients? We're coming back to the office, maybe with the same name tag, but we're all coming back to the office as different people. So a cultivating compassion practice done at home, done in the workplace, maybe even in your car on the way to work, connects our brain and our body. It actually addresses our vagal tone and invites us to connect in deeper ways. Susan felt it online and I know many of my, my people have and that only expands when we're in one-on-one -on -one connection systems. And um, in June, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do a whole program on this mindfulness and sales. So um, Amy and the team at Growson are gonna tell you a little bit more about that. But we did a cultivating compassion meditation. That was one when I selected for today. How you connect to yourself, connect to others and connect to someone that you wanna connect can be done with mindfulness. But I'm not the only one talking about mindfulness. I just shared with you the example of Intel. 
We've got Nike, Deutsche Bank, Apple, HBO, Aetna, and Procter & Gamble. These don't have to be formal programs. Often they start as informal programs that grow over time. I love the example of Aetna. Aetna has a workplace coloring sheet that is scientifically proven. And we know with our children, if you take a moment to color, reduces your stress, increases focus. And at Aetna, before big board meetings, they have their executives just color for a few moments. You don't look at a coloring sheet and say, this has to be green and this has to be yellow. You just start to get into it and let the colors flow. If you do that before a strategic planning session, it allows for greater decision making as well. General Mills, Google, Walmart, Moss Adams, L'Oreal, and Goldman Sachs. All organizations that are applying mindfulness. In fact, Google is famous for their Search Inside their Side Yourself Institute. So I know if mindfulness will work for the engineers at Google, it will work whether you are serving realtors, truckers, painters, if you are serving doctors, dentists, lawyers, mindfulness, human skills are now more important than ever as we get away from these screens and get back to face-to-face. -to -face. Mindfulness is becoming a key strategic objective for organizations to recruit, retain, and maintain top talent. I love to share the story of Christina. She's in the HR field and she's having a hard time connecting to others in the organization. Many of my leaders are having this challenge right now, having to lure people back into their offices or however you're transforming your work dynamic. And this calls for a meta-awareness practice, helps you to rewrite and weave your experience mindfully to construct a positive mental model of our world. What we think about, we bring about. So in the absence of taking a mindful moment each day to set your intention, I'm going to be success today, I'm going to be joy today, our world can knock us off course and success suddenly becomes stress. Outstanding can become overwhelmed and a meta-awareness practice can help you set a great mental awareness model for your world. So I hope in just these couple of minutes, I've shared with you that mindfulness can help you with your attention system in your brain, can help you build resilience. We always hear about athletes and how they are being more mindful and how it's allowing them to run that Ironman. Well, what's the Ironman in your organization? Maybe infusing a few moments of mindfulness will help you be mentally, physically, emotionally healthier as you climb that mountain. Mindfulness helps our connection. First of all, our connection to ourself, making sure our brains and our bodies are healthy, and then connecting ourselves with our staff, our members, and our families around the world. And mindfulness is a key factor for executive presence moving forward, allowing you to center your brain and your body. And I know several of you mentioned feeling more centered as a result of that little micro practice. When you are mindful, you Activating the attention system of your brain, you create better employee experiences. When you're more resilient, you create better sales experiences. So you can hit those new member recruitment and sales goals. You connect better to your customer or member experience, it allows you to build more efficient teams and serve as a more inspiring workplace leader. It's really key to think about Mindfulness isn't about what you do, but it's about how you are being in the doing. We have seven practices to be mindful and we don't have time to do a deep dive into all of them today. But at the end, I'm gonna share with you where you can get my mindful mini poster as a digital download. And I'm always welcome to bring this to your organization or have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. That first one is centering. Take a moment, no matter how the tornado is moving around you, to just center yourself. Number two is examine your beliefs because it is done unto you as you believe. We've all had those days when we believe that call with the member is going to go bad and it does. 
we've also had the opposite. When we believe that exchange is going to be profitable and prosperous and we sign a new sponsor, we need to be mindful with our technology, set an intention, create a vision, be mindful in movement, even at your desk. Maybe just take a moment now and twist your back left and right. Maybe reach up and bring a little mindfulness and movement into your day. And then of course, mindfulness and gratitude. Mindfulness matters and brings powerful business results. It starts with setting your affirmation or setting your intention. And I, I love the question, Paige. I didn't even, even tee you up to do it, but I do, I do have my book. It's called Everyday Mindfulness from Chaos to Calm in a Crazy World. And this is kind of a daily inspirational reader. So each day you pick a word of your intention or your affirmation that has an inspirational quote and an inspirational story. And I'll give you a tip at the end. If you stick around, I'm going to give you a 30-day sample copy of this book that you can try as my gift to you and as a thank you for being a part of the Grow Stone family. So mindfulness, start, set your intention or write an affirmation right there at your desk. If you've got a post-it note, pick that word, joy. I am joyful in each and every member, in member interaction today. I am at peace. I choose peace as I experience this moment. Mindfulness is something that you can do with yourself, your staff, and your members to set your day on course. We remember that global workforce report, it breaks down stress. And I like to share this just in terms of words to think about. One is worry, you know, stress and overwhelm, those are often in the news right now, but a lot of it comes from worry. And in this report, it says that from 2019 to 2020, worry was up 10%, 10 percent, 10 points. And I think it's pretty easy to say it's probably up another 10 points. So as you're engaging with your members and volunteers in a new, mindful, connected, compassionate way, maybe tap into what are they worrying about and how can your association solve that or support them through that? Then of course, there's this, the daily stress. It was up 8% from 2019 to 2020. And I invite you, this is about a 150 page report. If you wanna dive into it more, the source here is the Gallup State of the Workplace report. And I'm happy to send you that link. And you can see, of course, the, the gender and age breakdowns there. If your members are primarily women, know that daily stress is impacting us all, but it's on an elevated level often for women. This word is also key, daily anger. We know that prolonged stress can be manifest as anger. It was up 7% from 2019 to 2020. And, and Lynn, thank you for asking about the book. I'm gonna make sure you get, get, it, get it. It's Everyday Mindfulness from Chaos to Calm in a Crazy World. And there'll be a picture of it on the screen here in a little bit. So watch for signs of anger as it relates to stress. And then of course, sadness. This was up 20 from, up regionally is about 26%, it was up 3%. But I think as this pandemic has continued to linger, sadness is something that we wanna be asking about. You know, what are you feeling sad about? How can we start to address sadness? Because all of us personally and professionally are having to let go of what was in our work to create something higher and better. And there's often a mourning time in that experience. So post-pandemic trends, worry, stress, anger, and sadness, all of these things that we see in the State of the Workplace report can be redu reduced with a mindful practice. And I've shared with you seven of those things. So I wanna invite you to think about what's one practice you might try. And I'm gonna bring up on the screen, this is that mindful meeting planner poster. And I also have this for mindful association executive. And if you go to this link, hollydeckworth.com slash mindful mini dash posters, hopefully this link is working. Um, it will have all seven of them, centering, examining your beliefs, technology, intention, vision, movement, and gratitude. I want to invite you to visit that chat box again and pick one of these seven that you're going to try. Julian says, I'm going to try the stop practice. Another tip with that one, uh, Jillian, is if you kind of forget to use it, 
I often use a stop sign or a stop light as a key visual indicator for me. If you're a commuter or driver, when you are driving and you see a stop sign, utilize that as a cue. Stop, take a moment, observe and proceed. Meditation today we did with music, gratitude, centering. Thanks, Nancy. Mindful movement, Emily, that one makes a huge difference. And uh, there's a lot of mindful walking practices out there. But making sure that your mindful practice is accessible by everyone, especially if you have uh, differently abled folks in your association. I love that idea of the, just sitting at your desk. If you've got a Zoom meeting, maybe this afternoon, you can be the one that invites people to mindful movement. Nancy Lawson, set an intention, one word each day of what you want to have happen. Uh, I love that Lynn, beliefs, belief 1.0, belief 2.0. And I know so many of you even started this webinar today with the idea of gratitude. That's not just the words you think, but taking a moment to actually feel that sense of gratitude. Um, I know as association leaders, you guys all love great resources. And as we move to a close on, on this, I wanted to share with you some of my favorites. Um, Peak Mind is a book by uh, Anishi Jha, uh, a great one if you wanna do a deeper dive into this. The Search Inside Yourself, this is um, the book that the folks at Google wrote. Uh, Mindfulness Without Bells and Beads is a brand new one by Cliff Smith. He was an executive at Ernst & Young. Um, Anything by John Kabat-Zinn can be amazing. My podcast is called The Everyday Mindfulness Show. And if you prefer mindfulness and magazines, there's a mindful magazine. And then of course, um, if some of you, it looks like have already been to my LinkedIn profile, but I did found the American Mindfulness Association during the pandemic. Would love to have you uh, check that out. Here on your screen is the QR code to my LinkedIn profile. If you uh, would like the, the book, the 30 day sample book is called Everyday Mindfulness for the C-Suite, 30 days to a calm and powerful executive presence. And I, I just wanna give that to people because I want you to try this. It's you know, great for us to have this hour to do a mini, mini practice and learn a little bit about the science, but there's nothing like practicing it. So if you um, go to um, either send me an email at that link, probably at Leadership Solutions INTL and say, you know, give me the book. I, I'm not adding you to an email list. I just, just want you to have the book or go to my LinkedIn and just send me a direct message. Um, I will send you this 30 day book. And of course, Nancy, you are so kind putting that in the chat box. Thank you so much. And that is the 30 day sample of the larger book. I know Lynn, we talked about um, what was the other book called that it's the, the similar, similar title only. This is one for every single day of the year and it's a great uh, giveaway for your association leaders. So um, as we move to um, about the 50 minute mark of our webinar, I'm here in service to you. What questions do you have? Again, you guys are doing so great in the chat box, feel free to chat me your questions. Um, what, what can I answer for you as you look to bring mindfulness? Mindfulness, the secular and neuroscience-based practice into your associations to create more focus. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you all type your questions in the chat box. Because as I said, my desire for you was that you actually walk away knowledgeable, but not just knowledgeable, but empowered to infuse this into your day. And you know, I love that some of you are gonna try that stop practice. Take a breath. You might remember that big pitcher of water at the beginning. Maybe take a moment, grab a glass, and just drink a glass of water mindfully. Take a moment to feel is the water cool or room temperature, is it warm? Maybe you're not a water person, try that with coffee, but just taking that experience to remember that you have to take care of you so you can take care of leading your organization. So as you guys are typing your questions in the chat box, I'm really impressed, maybe I answered them all. I just wanna remind you that here's what we covered. We talked a little bit about the state of the global workplace report. You know what mindfulness is? now. 
it's not spiritual. It doesn't take a lot of time. You can do it at your desktop. It's all secular and neuroscience based that it benefits your brain. It's actually a workout for your brain to keep those neural pathways healthy and sharp, allowing you to lead from a more wellness position. And as you all experience, invites you to express a little bit more focus in your day. And I know I shared with you guys that Amazon tip to utilize that Amazon spa music at your desk, but you might also consider getting an app on your phone I am proud to be a live Insight Timer teacher. I'm, I do a meditation every day at noon Eastern time. So I'm gonna be jumping off to do that here in a little while. A 15 minute everyday mindfulness midday reset on Insight Timer is a great way to go. You might try 10% Happier or any one of those sessions as an opportunity to connect to, to Mindful. A happier is another app. 10% uh, happier, happier um, podcast, lots of great ways that you can be more mindful and you can even do it with your technology. Um, David says you can find tracks on Spotify as well as on YouTube. So um, another cool thing is if you have any sort of um, watch now, there's mindfulness there. Uh, Jess uses Headspace as a great app also, and I know that uh, they are great sponsors in the association world. So lots of ways that we can bring our presence, our greatest gift back into the organization. Uh, looks like we have some computers coming and going. Uh, Carrie, thank you so much. It's good to see you. Yes, I had the privilege of, of speaking at AEI a few years ago. And I believe that a lot of my programs are still uh, CEU certified um, under the umbrella of the National Association of Realtors um, in the ethics department. So if that's something that your association is looking for, it would be my joy to have that conversation with you. Uh, Jillian saying, have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, if you have any questions, you now have my LinkedIn. Uh, send me those questions. And Amy, I'm going to turn it back to you for uh, last minute thoughts. Did you have any questions? I know you were as excited about this content as, as everybody was. It was great. Thank you so much, Holly. I know I feel more relaxed, and I know that I have techniques now that I can use when I just need a a breather from the craziness of both my work and my home life. <laughs> I'm a busy mom and work full time, so I appreciate your time today. Thank you all for attending. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We will be back 